afternoon all. Now today I'm looking at this little LED driver and uh, this one was sent to me very kindly by icstation.com So here it is on icstation.com and it's the 1 watt LED driver 350 milliamps PWM light dimmer DC to DC step down module four dollars and 23 cents and it's product code 3196 and it's also on eBay uh, three dollars 94 from chip partner now chip partner and icstation.com are one and the same and the reason I'm showing the eBay listing is because there's this rather good photo of the board and in particular the chip and the chip is a 6200 and there's a little logo on the chip. But I've searched far and wide for this thing and I cannot find a data sheet for it. So if anyone can find a data sheet for a 6200 LED driver, then I'd be very grateful to know where I can get it. And uh, just to be sure that the chip is actually called a 6200, I'll just shine a torch on it. There's the 6200. This one doesn't seem to have the logo but it has a different date code. This one is 1305 and the one on the screen there is 1203. So that's definitely the date code. 6200 is definitely the part number of the chip. So let's start putting this driver through its paces. I've soldered on a one watt LED and a nine volt battery clip. Let's fit the battery. So that works fine. Uh, now let's try two LEDs which should light up perfectly well on 9 volts. So there it is with two LEDs. And I'm just going to put my welding glass over those so as not to dazzle the camera. And uh, those LEDs will be the same brightness uh, for two of them as it was for one because this is producing a constant current of 350 milliamps. Now with three LEDs, um, the LEDs are much dimmer because uh, there really isn't enough voltage from this 9 volt battery to drive all three at the full current. So with 18 volts we've now got enough voltage to put the full 350 milliamps through three LEDs. So now I've got four uh, 3 watt LEDs this time but I'm still driving them at 1 watt and the power is connected so I'm che checking that the chip is happy to have an open circuit output and now I'm going to check that it's happy to have the LEDs connected one at a time. It says one LED, there are two LEDs, three LEDs and four LEDs, all the same brightness, doesn't matter how many LEDs I connect. Now I asked icstation.com if I could have three of these modules and they very kindly agreed so I've stacked two of them directly on top of each other. I've literally paralleled them up and that's going to produce 700 milliamps. And since these are three watt LEDs, they're fine with 700 milliamps. So let's do the same test again. 18 volt input, 700 milliamps constant current, and we'll go through all four LEDs. Okay, one LED, two LEDs, Three LEDs and four LEDs. So they seem quite happy taking 700 milliamps and it means that you can stack these modules. Camera's not going to come back is it? You can stack these modules to produce higher currents. Now what else can you do with these modules? Well there's a PWM pair of pins there on the board so let's try shorting them out. and nothing happens. So grounding the PWM input doesn't switch off the LEDs. However, connecting 1.2 volts, actually that's 1.5 volts because that's an alkaline, which I've connected through a 1K resistor to the PWM input, PWM input does mute the LEDs. If I remove that, they come on. If I put it back in, they go off. So the PWM input is inverse logic. You have to take it high to turn the LEDs off and let it fall low 
to turn the LEDs back on. So that means if you put a suitable pulse width modulation signal on that input, you can vary the brightness of the LEDs. Now these LED driver modules have a 5 to 35 volt input range, output of 350 milliamps and can drive 1 to 10 pieces of 1 watt LED. Well that's pretty handy because when I do the ultimate test here of a 20 watt LED we need 700 milliamps and there are 10 LEDs in each column, two columns parallel together. So let's see if we can drive this 20 watt LED. So it's a bit of a lash up but there it is 20 watt LED requiring 700 milliamps, two paralleled 1 watt drivers and I'm going to have to use my boost converter for this to generate the 35 volts. Set it to 35 volts. I put a current limit, limit of 1 amp on but that shouldn't limit because the driver itself will limit at 700 milliamps. So let's switch on, watch the voltage come up. This boost converter is slow to ramp up. There goes the LED, nice and bright. And we hit 35 volts. And that seems fine for the moment. I'll leave that switched on for a little while and then just check the temperature of the driver modules. Right, that's been a minute or two. So let's switch off and see what we can feel. Okay. Well, nothing seems particularly warm. The chip is cool. The diode, not particularly warm. The inductor is probably the warmest thing, but that's only mildly warm. So those modules do seem to be able to drive 10 watts each. Um, you get 10 watts, of course, by having 10 1 watt LEDs. And you can parallel the modules to drive these bigger LEDs. And you could pulse width modulation, uh, modulation them, PWM them, to vary the brightness of the LED. So quite a versatile module, I think. So there it is, the 1 watt LED driver module, uh, which you can get from icstation.com for $4.23. But that chip, the 6200, is still a mystery. If anyone knows what that logo is, or who makes that chip, I'd love to know. Now, just a footnote to this, this module is also available in a 3 watt, 700 milliamp version. And uh, if you look at this picture, you can see it's the same chip, the 6200, but the resistor values are different. Now, those three resistors are all in parallel. And when I worked out the parallel value, it is about half that of the 350 milliamp module. So it is conceivable that you could put two of these 700 milliamp modules in parallel um, in the double decker fashion that I did down here and drive one and a half amps into uh, a 50 watt LED or even possibly put four of them in parallel and drive a 100 watt LED. But I've not tried that. Be fun to try it though, wouldn't it?